Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. We are going to prepare a three unit pin ledge bridge on this patient. The existing temporary partial will be used to establish the finishing lines on the central and the lateral incisor. And the way this is done is that we make a pencil mark. Can you turn this way, Jan? Mm -hmm. We'll make a pencil mark on the central and the lateral. The purpose of this is to establish a finishing line on the labial extent of our slice that is far enough out so that the patient can clean this margin with a toothbrush, but not too far out that it's going to display a lot of gold. We're going to use a Bowley gauge to establish the position of the ledges on the pin ledge preparation. We set the Bowley gauge at two and a half millimeters and scribe it across the tooth as you see here. This means that the tooth is two and a half millimeters wide at this point. If we take a half a millimeter off the lingual surface in reduction, make our ledge a half a millimeter, this means that we have a millimeter and a half of tooth structure left. This is the amount that's needed to keep the gold from showing through. Now we will outline the parameters of our preparation. This is the groove that we're going to place, a cingulum ledge. And this will show us where we're going to make our cuts. Go all the way up the incisal ledge. You have to be careful that you don't make this groove too deep in this incisal ledge area again, or else that gold is going to show through. And then you take the same diamond, turn it, and establish your incisal ledge. You make this cut about a millimeter deep. Remembering that we're going to wipe that off and we'll blow it off. Yeah, okay. And we'll get our cingulum ledge the same way. Establish that. Remembering we'll need about a millimeter because we're going to take a half a millimeter off on the lingual surface and we'll like to have about a half a millimeter left for the ledge. The 699-9 diamond will be used to establish the Misha finishing line here, coming just up to the second pencil mark and around to the lingual surface. Once we've had this sharp slice established, then we will bring the finishing line around the lingual surface into into the little groove that we've established with the inverted cone diamond. Also, we can use this for further refining the bevel that we have on the inside lid. Sharpening up the ledge, placing the recess. This portion of the preparation should be deeper than the rest of the lingual reduction. 
the half round burr is used then to penetrate the enamel. use a twist drill to survey the teeth and get the proper line of draw. By going back and forth, we can establish this. We have to be careful that we don't tilt the drill too much because we can perforate the tooth. Now, if we tilt it too much on the buccal lingual direction, we can also show the pin through on the enamel here. So it's very important to get the proper line. Okay, okay this, first, this first pin hole, we're going to drill to a depth of about a millimeter. Now we'll place a pin in to check the line of draw. The line of draw seems to be correct, so now we'll remove the pin and deepen the pinhole until it's three millimeters deep for this incisal pin. Going in the same line of draw, we'll fill that pinhole, never stopping the pin, the twist drill in the tooth, never reversing it, but always pumping it up and down so we have the proper depth of our pinhole. And then we move the same twist drill over to the next pinhole and by establishing the line of draw on the first pinhole, we're going to do the second one. And we're going to use the impression pin as a guide pin. Now you'll notice that this pin will go into the tooth much farther than it did originally. And you can see that pin in place. Now, This is not very difficult, but it's very important that you follow these instructions, and that is, again, dry run. Line up this twist drill with the guide pin from two directions, from the anterior and from the distal. And do this back and forth until it looks like both of those cuts are going to be in the same line of draw. And then we will establish our pinhole, but again, making it only a millimeter deep. Now we'll place another pin in. Okay, we'll look at it from the distal and from the lingual. And that seems to be in pretty good line of draw, but you can see it's not deep enough. Now we're drilling the cingulum pinhole. This is drilled to a depth of two and a half millimeters. And you'll notice we're using a pumping action on our twist drill, never stopping in the tooth, because this might jam the twist drill. Now we'll check this from two different directions. Line it up, see how it looks on the lingual, and line up that twist drill to make sure that it is in, in line with the, and look at it from, right ang from the right angles, right from the distal. You can use your assistant for this, or you can just turn your mirror. Now we'll drill that, but again, only to a depth of about a millimeter, to see if we're on the right track. And but you can see that they do all line up. The next thing is to bevel the opening of the pinhole into the tooth. We'll use a number four round burr to establish this bevel. This will make it easier for the pin to slide into the tooth. We simply make a little bevel, or like a tunnel, or a funnel, the opening of the pinholes themselves. Now we'll hollow grind the incisal edge, and to do this, we'll then hollow grind. In other words, rather than having a straight bevel, 
This incisal edge will be hollowed out. And we do this so that from the from the interior it doesn't show. Now if you can show uh, that incisal edge and get it in focus there, and I tip this mirror, you can see it. How I've established there that bevel, which is really an arc or it's curved. So there's extra gold on that incisal edge to protect this very fragile tooth. Now we're going to make any necessary adjustments in clearance with a biscuit diamond. And a couple of areas here that we want to smooth up. Just round this just a bit. And in the area where your incisal bevel comes into your slice, you want to make sure that there's enough gold there, so you round that slightly. And here we're doing it direct on the mesial of the little lateral incisor. Now that everything is finished, we are ready to take our rubber base impression. We'll remove the string pack that has been left in for five minutes. This should be done very carefully because if this is jerked out, bleeding will start. And then the rubber is injected very carefully around the very cervical of the preparation, around the pins, being careful not to dislodge them. And once this preparation has been injected, we go over to the lateral, do the cervical, and then around the pins, up on the incisal ledge, then across the ridge just a little bit, making sure that we have enough light bodied rubber base material. And then the pins tend to float up, so we will tap them all. You can use a mirror handle or a cotton forceps handle. After this is done, then we will seat the tray, making sure that we have clearance to make room for the pins. The tray is seated all the way and allowed to set for about 10 minutes. Some of the pins may remain in the tooth, as a couple of them have. But this is to be expected because these pins are rather long. Now you can see that we have reinserted. See if you can get in and uh, show this. We have reinserted the distal incisal pin. And the mesial incisal pin was sticking out. We've tapped it. Make sure that it's down all the way. And make sure that these other pins are in place all the way. And we'll take our last pin here, make sure it's cleaned off, there isn't any wax on it, and we'll then slip it into its proper area. Now we can see that the pins are all in their proper place. They're parallel to each other. They've all been tapped, so we're sure that they're all the way down into the rubber base impression. The next thing to do is to temporize we have to seal the uh, pinholes so that saliva and liquid monomer does not get down the pinhole. So we'll use Williams plastic pins, as you see here, that have been dunked or dragged in utility wax, the red wax that you see here. And this utility wax will seal the Williams plastic pin. The excess utility wax is removed with an explorer However, there still is a seal or a gasket around each of those pins. Then we'll take tooth color Duralay. This happens to be shade 62 and paint Duralay on the lingual surface, tying the three pins together. You have to be careful. That you don't use too wet a mixture or else it'll run all over the gingival tissue. Keep this just slightly short of the gingiva. Build up the lingual surface, as you see here, and also build it up over the incisal edge to protect the delicate incisal. Now we have the bridge back after it's been fabricated. And you can see that this has a very aesthetic, pleasing look. It's not cemented. It's tried in to see if it fits properly. But you'll notice that the facing matches the adjacent tooth and that we have tried to match the translucency and the gray areas on our facing. And we've done this by placing a little pencil lead in back of the pin facing before it was cemented. 
and we're happy with the fit and any adjustments that need to be made in occlusion, then we varnish the teeth, and then, in this case, we're using zinc phosphate cement. And zinc phosphate cement is spun down the uh, pinholes with a spiral lentulo, spinning it in the proper direction. And when the pinholes are filled with this inlay consistency cement, then the bridge is seated all the way. We have a minimal amount of working time, so it's very important to drive this bridge down all the way, being careful not to fracture the incised ledge of the teeth. While the cement is still a little bit soft, the gold can be burnished over the incised ledge, and the thin areas around the cervical can be burnished with this 5S burnisher. And then a fine emery disc is used here to go from gold to tooth to finish these margins on the incised ledge, to dress these down, to round them so that they don't reflect light. And then the patient is allowed to hold this bridge down for 10 minutes by biting on an orangewood stick. Once the cement has been removed, we'll take a look at this, and you can see the amount of gold that we have on the incised ledge, and yet when properly beveled from the front view, you cannot see this gold because it reflects the darkness of the mouth and uh, looks very pleasing and very ascetic. That should give the patient many years of service. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu/license.